it's a it's a Drake manufactured ground vehicle that's called the Mule. I mean, it's a little on the nose. Anyone that's played Star Citizen and done a, uh, a box collection mission will be pretty familiar with the sort of the ways you have to do it. And from watching players play these missions, it's clear that there is scope to improve people's lives there. So let's say that you and your friends have just picked up a cargo collection or cargo delivery mission or something like that. That means that you need to go to a planetside location, manually collect a whole bunch of carryable cargo, and then cart it to some other location. The mule comes in here where you can launch a ship however far away from the location as you need to, drive the mule in. It looks like this chunky industrial thing, but... Um it, it definitely accelerates and, uh, you know, it, it yeah, nips around. I, I got nothing but nip nips. <laughs> Load it up with six carryable boxes and then drive them all back in one go. Save you a few round trips. Well, what, what makes it Drake is it's kind of like almost low-tech styling. So, for example, it's chunky pipes in the interior. And yeah, like they're just quite low-tech. When we were building the mule, we were conscious of trying to make it fit in as many ships as possible. And size-wise, if you can fit a rock on board your ship, you can fit a mule. Visually, my favorite part is either the entrance door, because it has these big beaming lights on there that like, kind of light your way, but it just gives it like a really nice character to it. Or the front arms, as I said, like when they deploy, it just looks like it's trying to give you a hug. And it's just like these little arms that kind of fold out and uh, yeah, it, looks kind of, it makes it look kind of cute. That and like the oversized wheels kind of make it look like a Tonka truck. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a cute little thing, you know? The Drake Mule is a fantastic addition to the game. It is a real big quality of life time saver for those that do box missions. And then in the future, with the Cargo Refactor, it's next big use will be actually helping you load your vehicles um, loading these big SCU crates from where the cargo is delivered via a freight elevator and with the cradle in the back and the forklift at the front you can then essentially ferry two uh, large SCU crates towards your ship and onto your ship depending on your ship if, if your ship is capable of having it attached like that the Drake Mule is the latest in a recent line of small utility ground vehicles designed to improve the first-person, non-combat experience and provide more opportunities for expanded and emergent gameplay than ever before. And it'll make its straight-to-drivable debut in the persistent universe during this year's Invictus launch week. But that's not all, because the event has also brought with it the long-awaited Scorpius. With its popular styling and notable firepower, Let's learn more about this tandem terror from Robert Space Industries. The, the in-game one, not the... Well, I suppose it's both. My favorite aspect of the ship, if I could pick only one. This ship definitely has an unforgettable silhouette. When you first see it, it you can definitely tell that it's going to be you know, something that you need to take seriously. It's something which you're not really going to forget anytime soon when you see it. So we have a few heavy fighters in the game. We've got the Banner Defender, the Anvil Hurricane, the Super Hornet, and they all uh, cater for players who enjoy combat, but they want to have a bit more um, cooperative combat between you and another player who are in one ship taking on the hordes of enemies. Something that makes these two-person heavy fighters uh, special compared to uh, smaller ships is just that shared experience of combat. It's just a much nicer uh, gameplay experience when you're in this one ship taking on the world uh, rather than two people doing their own thing. So the Scorpius is a heavy fighter. It's quite agile given its size. It's a two-person ship, and the gunner is in control of a remote turret. When we first conceived the concept of this ship, um, we didn't have the tech in place to have moving turrets. Um, so I worked with Yogi and Mark 
um, to get this in place. And for the first time, you'll be able to control where the turret sits on the ship. And it's also the first ship in Star Citizen to feature the, the iconic wing split. We added a ship transform hotkey. So when the landing gear is retracted, you can use Alt and K to deploy the wings without having to also deploy the um, landing gear at the same time. There were certain elements from other RSI ships which we've taken, most notably the thrusters. But honestly, th this thing does stand on its own two feet, I think more than the average ship. We were almost leaning towards a, a more uh, stealthy, sort of futuristic feel for the ship and kind of what that would look like and mean to RSI if they were to progress down that route. So since concept, it's doubled its missile loadout, so it's now got 16 size 2 missiles. And the shields have gone up to a single size 2 shield, which is uh, pretty hefty in the current uh, combat meta. Whilst the Scorpius will be launching at Invictus Launch Week, development is not stopping on the ship. There are some things that we want to do with it in the future, but they weren't essential to the, the vehicle releasing. This ship is for someone who wants a, an agile ship that also does a lot of damage. In future, what we would like to do, so, you know, wings retracted, maybe the ship can um, gain more momentum, go have more agility. That is something we do want to look back at in the future. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Drake may not have the flashiest looks, but their focus on utility and usefulness can never be questioned with the upcoming Mule. That the RSI Scorpius will increase opportunities for those wanting to do the, the two-pilot tango while pushing turret gameplay into new spaces with its unprecedented changeable firing arcs. And that all of this is part of this year's Invictus Launch Week going on right now. Pop on over to the robertspaceindustries.com website for more details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. This is the seventh floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, eighth story of the building as a whole, and the first of three that will soon be home to our UK studio. Because they... They don't count the ground floor as, as one here. So the eighth story is actually numbered as the seventh story, it's seventh floor. No, Justin and Amanda, you do not cut this out. This is important. We'll, you, we'll see you all next week. <laughs>